Today, we are going to talk about the Q-Acoustic Concept 500. There are a few videos on it already, lots of good written reviews, as well as YouTube videos. And I was asking myself, how can I make my story interesting? And I thought about it, I'm like, you know what, I'll just tell everyone my journey with the Concept 500. Now, some of you might not have the patience to sit through my whole video, so I'll summarize it for you right away. The Concept 500 is great if you are not chasing after the V-curve. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Now, for those of you with a bit more patience, Ron from New Record Day reached out to me the other day. And he said, Thomas, how are the Concept 500? They're good, huh? I'm like, mm, it's okay. I mean, it's good, but it's not $6,000 USD good. There's nothing that stands out. Maybe that's my story. No, this is a speaker that does everything good. Nothing stands out. Everything stands out. You know, the way to praise a speaker when there's nothing to talk about. I was so desperate that I reached out to my audiophile buddies. Hey, uh, I need to borrow some uh, gear. Maybe it's the synergy that's the problem. Sure, I got my hands on a few higher-end amps. So I had these speakers for a few months already. Now, every time when I push these speakers out from my other room, because I swap speakers all the time, I keep crossing my fingers. Please, today be the day. Let it be the day that... These speakers will transform into fantastic speakers because of breaking or whatever, or the weather. And finally, one day it happened. And I was like, oh my goodness, these speakers are freaking amazing. And today we are going to talk about my journey with the Concept 500. And no, that one day is not because Q Acoustic decided to deposit $5,000 into my bank account. Let me put up the specs here on screen. Now, given the fact that other YouTubers have talked about this speaker extensively, I am not going to go into detail. Now, for the odd chance that you've been living under a rock and have never seen a Concept 500 video, I'll say this. Go read up on the cabinet design. Very interesting on how to deal with cabinet resonance. And it actually works. Regarding how it sounds, once again, I'm going to skip that too. You know why? Because Ron did a good job explaining how it sounds. So just go watch this video, man. Let's not waste time. I am going to focus on what you should be careful of if you plan to buy the speaker and what I like about this speaker. So let's start with the negative. Number one, I wish it looked a lot more different than the Q Acoustic 3050i. Now keep in mind, this is $6,000. The other one's what, 800 bucks, I think. But when I look at this speaker, it reminds me so much of the 3050i. So anyway, this is a question of taste. Now, the second thing you have to be aware of, and this I will spend a bit of time on, is that it is not a V-curve. And I was telling Ron that. Ron was like, yeah, it's not a V-curve. Here, let me send you the graph, and I'll show you that it's not a V-curve. I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. You see, one of the problems I face is that I get a lot of emails, and people tell me, Thomas, man, I, I won't get a chance to listen to it before I buy. So if you tell me it's good, I'm buying it. And I'm like... What is good? If you're like Mr. Vintage, you don't want V-curve. If you're like Mr. Kanta, you love V-curve. And one thing I uh, noticed, whenever I let an audiophile who loves V-curve listen to a neutral sounding gear next to a V-curve voice gear, they say that the neutral sounding gear sounds lifeless. And so if, let's say that you're somebody who likes a Kef R11, for example, that thing has crazy bass, man. You put it next to this Q Acoustic, you're gonna find the Q Acoustic lifeless because that's your kind of sound. That's why I say it's very important. It's a question of taste. So if you like the Focal sound, then this might not be for you. Because the final thing you have to be aware of if you like those kind of, that kind of sound, the Focal sound with the metal tweeter, the way it sparkles is not the same. It just doesn't sparkle as well as metal tweeters. And for some people, they chase after that. Especially you Focal fans, you know what I'm talking about. So these are the things that you have to be aware of. There are a few things that I really like about these speakers. I'll start with the story, okay? Now, in the beginning, 
all I did was pair the speaker with my MAC6700, one the Macintosh integrated amp. Because in my head, I'm like, this is good enough to drive these speakers. These are 6 ohm, rated as 6 ohm. So I connect it to the 4 ohm tab of my integrated amp. And I keep having this problem where I'm like, man, it sounds a little bit thin. I wish it was warmer. And I understand they're going for a more neutral type of presentation, but it just doesn't draw me in. I tried it with the Doge 10, but not modified. And that version, as I mentioned, is not a warm sounding integrated amp. So the match was not good. Sure, I get a lot of clarity. I mean, it still sounds good, but I'm expecting to be blown away at $6,000. The Devalet, I tried it one day, sounded great. I'm like, oh, okay, sounds very good. I just wish it was a little bit better. So one day I decided, you know what? Today I am gonna spend all my energy trying to get these speakers to sound good. By accident that day, I had it plugged to the 8 ohm tab on my Macintosh MAC6700. And I'm like, what the hell? It's warm sounding. This is great. This is exactly what I'm looking for. The bass is rich. And also, this is the key. I pull my speakers out. I move my chair around, trying to find the optimal triangle position. And that's when magic happened. The sound stage is incredible. Picture this. Your speakers are five feet away from the front wall. And you go behind your speaker and stand there, five feet. That's where the singer is, well, in between the speaker. That's how deep the sound stage is. So the whole presentation is behind the speakers. So with the sound stage properly anchored, solid, and extremely holographic, when I listen to music with the Concept 500, I'm not just listening to music, I'm actually listening to a live performance. Now, out of all the speakers I've had at my place, yes, all of them can form a center solid image, but not many of them can give me this illusion that I'm listening to a live performance. And I think this is what differentiates between entry audio and high-end audio. And for that reason, I say the Concept 500 belongs to the high-end audio world. Also, the singer is really anchored in the middle, so much so, that with the Concept 500, when I listen to it, I stare at empty space, air, all the time. Because I'm just in awe, <laughs> the, the, the solid center image that it's forming. So usually with other speakers, I mean, I hear it, I, I know it's in the middle, but not to the point where I, I just keep staring at empty space. So this blew me away. Now, as I mentioned before, bass, Yes, it does, it's not as powerful as, let's say, the Kef R11. But I notice there's a lot of texture in the bass, lots of information. Maybe there's no cabinet resonance, maybe because of the paper woofer, I don't know. But one habit I have these days when I listen to speakers, I purposely don't listen to it uh, critically. I just enjoy the music and I just let it happen naturally. So even though I, while testing the Concept 500, I'll play tracks that I'm very familiar with. I start noticing information that I don't usually notice in the bass region. And that's important for me because if I want a speaker to surprise me, that's how I want it to surprise me. Me putting no effort, but I start hearing things where, hey, you know what? I never pay attention to that, but it just comes out naturally. So I really like that part. Now, remember the top end, I said it doesn't sparkle like a focal, it's not sharp like a focal, and for some people it can be a deal breaker. But what I notice is maybe because of that, the mid-range is, is smooth. It's not the same kind of mid-range as, let's say, a Harbeth 30, that, the one that I had before, but it's more like the mid-range of a Dyne Audio. So it, there is a certain softness to it, surroundness to it, sweetness to it. And uh, I really enjoy that. So in short, I love the soundstage and the bass. Rich, the bass is rich. And it does depend on your amplifier. And here, let me tell you a story about the amplifier. So as I mentioned before, with the Macintosh, the bass was fantastic. Great control, very composed. Soundstage is solid, very nuanced, 
texture. And I'm not talking about the same kind of level as a thousand dollar speaker. It's the type that is beyond that. And then one day I decided to change it to the BAT integrated amp. That's when I go like, whoa, this one, the mid-range sounds fantastic. I lost my bass, my rich bass, but the mid-range is great. Now that one is a tube like hybrid. So the front is tube, the back is solid state. And then I say, you know what? I'm going to bring out the big guns. And then I took out the Lumen Power Amp and the Hego P30. Now we're talking about over 20 grand Canadian now driving these speaker. And that's where I go like, OMG, man. That's game over, man. The best of both worlds. I got the incredible nuanced bass, even one level up the Macintosh. And then I get this sweet, nice mid-range. Uh, in fact, I was telling myself, oh my goodness. You know, I never used this Hego P30. Had it for a while. Never got a chance to really use it. And uh, with that combo, I was able to bring the performance of the Lumen even one level up. My point here is this, this is a high-end speaker. You want to bring out the full potential of it, it will scale, meaning that if you give it very good electronics, yeah, it will keep up. I know you can put a thousand dollar integrated amp and drive these speakers and it'll sound good, but I don't know, man. If I spend three months eating instant noodles, saving up for a pair of speaker, good is not good enough for me. I want it to blow me away. So let's wrap it up at this point. In the beginning, the Q Acoustic Concept 500, I was debating if I should review it or not. And I actually wanted to send it back. Believe it or not, behind the scene, some gear, the higher end gear, I sent it back. Because I expect a lot when I'm talking about high end audio. Today, man, the budget gears are so good that you better outperform it significantly for me to approve. All right, and one final point is the placement. You see, I don't know is it because of the MTM configuration, like the mid-range tweeter, mid-range configuration, that gives it this incredible sound stage. Now, this reminds me of the Acoustic Energy 509. I made a video on it, and those speakers, man, same thing. You pull them up out enough, the sound stage is fantastic also with them. So it does break my heart when I see people posting photos of those speakers and having them just next to the wall. I'm like, really? Then what's the point of you buying those speakers? Now, talking about that, these speakers, the feet, some people love it, some people don't. It's, there's this big round thing. And me, I'm like, these things are functional. You can pull these speakers out to the middle of your living room and it will withstand the impact of a small dog and it won't tip over. So I'm like, oh, maybe that's why they designed it that way. All right, so with that said, if your goal is to search for a pair of speaker that has Amazing soundstage, rich and nuanced bass with sweet mid-range. Give the Concept 500 a try. All right, I'll see you next time. i